If you would like a free newsletter on this or other subjects, just give us a call at Christian Answers. The phone number is area code 512-218-8022. That's 512-218-8022. Or you could email us at cdebater at aol.com. That's cdebater at aol.com. Once again to our program, I'm Larry Wessels with Christian Answers, and I want to thank you for being with us here today. Well, this is Christian Answers Present, and we have a special guest in studio today, and her name is Joan Catterley. Got it. That's right. Very good. I, <laughs> I pronounced it correctly. So, <laughs> so uh, Joan, you actually attend the same church that I do. Yes, I do. Here in Austin, Texas. Yes, sure do. Uh, that's Day Spring Fellowship yes. over there on 5500 Avenue G, mm -hmm. Austin, Texas, 78751. Usually on all my programs through the years, I haven't really advertised much about my own church because uh, joining my church is not the point right. of our television shows. Mm -hmm. The point of our television shows is to glorify Jesus Christ and his gospel and have sinners reconcile themselves to God, the God of the Bible, through his son, Jesus Christ, through his shed blood on the cross to atone for our sins. That's really the bottom line. But I bring up our church simply because you and me attend the same church. And what's interesting about this, and for the folks at home to learn about, is I remember one day I was at church, at Day Spring Fellowship, and you were up ahead of me, and I just overheard you talking to someone about uh, your son, and he was watching some TV or something, and he had some newsletters that he was getting. And it, it struck my fancy, and so I'd like you to kind of reiterate that story that I overheard that day that you were actually telling someone else at the time. All right. Well, um, I was raised a Roman Catholic from the day I was born. I was practically baptized immediately. And... Um, went to the Catholic Church all my life. I, I don't know how to bring this into this, but I started reading the Bible because of some prayer meeting that I had been going to. Um, I came to realize and to know how much God loved me. I never knew that before. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, there's a verse in, I think, First John that we love because he first loved us. And so as I was reading the Bible, and I came to see the difference between the teachings of the Catholic Church that I was attending and what the Bible actually said, I um, became more and more disenchanted with it. And my son met a man from another church at one point, and he started receiving your newsletters, Christian Answers. And I started reading them, and there was a lot in there about the Catholic Church and their false teaching. And I agreed with everything that I was reading because it was so true, <laughs> and I knew it to be true. And so when I finally got up the courage, and maybe not even courage, but just came to realize that I could not stay in that church any longer because even my own pastor came out one day. You're talking about the priest? Uh, um, yeah, the Catholic okay. priest at my okay. church, my pastor. We were at a huge meeting, and um, he was speaking about the Bible, and he said that First and Second Genesis, the two chapters, contradicted each other. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? There's no way that's not possible. God's Word does not contradict itself. Mm -hmm. And then he went on, and he was talking in something in uh, the Old Testament, and I said, well, do you even believe that there was a, a worldwide flood? And he said, no. I do not. Mm -hmm. 
And I was so angry that he would say that in front of all these people that were there. Mm -hmm. And when my husband and I left that meeting that night, I told him, I'm never going back to this church again. Mm -hmm. That was a Monday. Because of these newsletters that I was receiving, I knew about the church, Day Spring Chapel, on Avenue... 5500 Avenue G, G. in Austin, Texas. Yes. Yeah. I knew about that church, and I knew because Larry was writing these newsletters, and he went there, that they spoke truth. And so I called the pastor the next day, found, him, found my phone number in the phone book, called him. That was Jackson Boyette. Was Jackson Boyette at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, oh, well, I, I told him what my pastor had said about not believing in the flood. And he said, oh, well, I believe every word in the Bible, <laughs> and I teach from it line by line. Mm -hmm. And this was a Tuesday. He said, we have a Bible study on Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. And so I went to that Bible study, and I've been going to that church ever since. Well, what year was that? That was five years ago, so help me subtract. Wait, it was 2010. 2010? Yes. Okay, yes. 2010. Yeah. So. And I'd always wanted to be baptized as, a, as an adult. I was baptized as a baby, of course, but never as an adult. But you never had believer's baptism. Mm -mm. No. And because when you're baptized in a Roman Catholic church as a baby, I mean, you don't know what's going on. Thing. I mean, no. Hitler was baptized as a baby. <laughs> exactly. he, he was raised in a Roman Catholic church. Oh, yeah. my goodness. And, and so, I don't think that baptism did him any good. No, I so. <laughs> so, so and in fact, when we read the scripture, we find that uh, believers are to be baptized. It doesn't say anything at all about baptizing babies no, in the say, Bible right. whatsoever. Yes. You know? yes. So, uh, so you talked to Jackson about getting baptized. Actually, he talked to me okay. uh, because yeah, he liked my story. Um, mm -hmm. And so he asked me, if he, he invited me to his home for him and Barbara to um, just visit with me, his wife, Barbara. And he just was checking me out to make sure that, my, that I was truly wanting to be baptized and that I was, a, you know, right. did believe the teachings of, of the Christian You know, church. I got baptized in 1980, I think it was 1982, real early. It was in the middle of the winter. Mm -hmm. In fact, at Jackson's house back then, he had a creek that ran in front of his house out there in Austin 78704 area. Mm -hmm. And I uh, remember it's it's freezing cold. <laughs> and Dayspring baptizes in the creek. You know? oh, that's... What I, there I was after my baptism. But I'll never forget that baptism. I got in a, a freezing cold creek and wow. I got baptized. You. <laughs> but, but praise the Lord, you know, because yes. I wanted to be baptized yes. badly because like you... I've been baptized as a baby in the Lutheran church. Uh -huh. My parents were Lutheran, and in that church, they baptized babies too. L Lutheranism, uh, I was in Missouri Synod uh, growing up as a kid. I was never born again spiritually. I was just, you know, most people, they, they just go with whatever religion their parents are, uh -huh. and they're raised that way. Uh -huh. And whether you know the Bible or not or whatever, you just, you just kind of go along with what your parents teach you. Uh -huh. And the Lutheran Church I was grown, I, I grew up in is a, has a many similarities with Roman Catholicism. Mm -hmm. uh, now they don't believe the same thing like Roman Catholicism, that when you're baptized as a baby, suddenly uh, uh, you know it has all these implications like it, it has in Roman Catholicism, exactly the same. But still, it's just as un, unbiblical because <laughs> because I you know I'm. Just looking back over my life, and uh, people, if they're interested, they can see it, my own testimony. I've got a, uh, if you go on YouTube, you can you can put in a search box, Larry Wessel's D&D &D Dungeon Master Testimony. I used to be a dungeon master. Uh, and uh, so I've got my whole testimony. There's like a two-hour video. <laughs> I've got a lot of my life history there and everything, but... But just looking back at my own life, before I actually got, got born again in 1981, uh, May 16th, 19, I still remember the time when it happened. Uh, all my life before that, even though I was baptized as a baby, I was in the world. I, I, I thought I was okay because I was raised in the church, but and I'd been baptized, but that doesn't, biblically speaking, that doesn't mean anything. 
You've got to be born again, as Jesus said. Now, in Roman Catholicism, they take what Jesus said there in John chapter 3, verses 3 through 8, and they, where Jesus says, you must be born again, and they say, well, that's your water baptism as a baby, right. which is a complete lie. Yeah. They're not telling the truth at all because those babies are no more born again uh, at all, biblically speaking, when you compare what the Scripture actually says about it. So, obviously, the Bible knows nothing at all about Babies being born again, as Jesus was talking about in John chapter 3, 3 through 8. But the Roman Catholic Church makes it seem that way, that, well, you're, you're saved uh, at that point. Right. And then if you keep the seven sacraments of the Roman Catholic Church, yeah. well, then maybe you'll make it to purgatory, perhaps. <laughs> exactly. you know? uh, unless you can get some indulgences and uh, yeah. the, the, the treasury of the church with the uh, extra merits that some other mm -hmm. saints have left over they can give you so you can get out of purgatory sooner but of course we know that's just a false gospel Galatians chapter 1 verses 6 through 9 uh, so uh, getting back to the situation then you want to get baptized but it's not to get saved no. you're with Jackson you're, you, want, you want to be baptized because you want to do the biblical command out of obedience yeah. out of obedience to Christ not to get born again no, no. Uh, you're just being a, a, an obedient christian mm -hmm. okay i am um, as i said i grew up a roman catholic and got married and had two children and we bought our first home and i thought well this is going to make me happy you know i finally got bought a home of our own and this is going to satisfy that longing within me i just i would go to church at this point in my life about 1973 74 and it was totally dead to me. And nothing that they said meant anything. I, I was wondering why I was even alive. Um, I just, I was looking for something, but I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. So I was with this friend of mine, and she and I were backing out of a, of a driveway, and she's turned around and she looked and she said, oh, praise the Lord. And I looked at Laura and I, I had never heard anyone say that before. And I said, what? And she told me that she had been going to prayer meetings in Corpus Christi. She moved back to Austin. And I said, well, Laura, if you ever find one of those prayer meetings here in Austin, let me know because I want to go to one. She dropped me off at my home. I walked inside. 20 minutes later, my phone rang, and it was a girl that I had known when we lived in South Austin. She was calling me to tell me that she was uh, going to these prayer meetings at, at the church I used to attend in South Austin. And she just, she said, the Lord put it on my heart to call you and invite you to come to these. I couldn't believe it because here Laura and I had just been talking about that. So I called Laura and, I, and we started going to these meetings. Uh, they moved from the church that I had attended over to St. Edward's. And now, St. Edward's is a Roman Catholic church. It's a school. Oh, university. yeah, it's a university. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, I debated a professor Did from you? there, from the head of the philosophy department, for two mm -hmm. hours oh. on cable access television. Wow. But anyway, yeah, go ahead. So, this priest was leading these prayer groups, and we, there was a lot of singing, and there was teaching, and that's when I came to realize how much God loved me. And so, from that point, I, would, I just started reading the Bible voraciously i feel like that's when i was really saved yes you, you felt like you were born again absolutely but it's my world turned but but it's, it was during the time you're reading the word of god mm -hmm. oh, now yes. see now that's what happened to me i'm 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 reading all these hal Lindsay books mm -hmm. I <laughs> like the, uh, the late great planet yes. earth and yes. satan's alive and well on planet mm -hmm. earth and and all this stuff and uh but when i would read those books i would uh always look up the Bible verses that he would mention in those in those things you know and I think it was the 1980s term the terminal generation was the book I was reading at that time in this line of how and anyway he in there he mentioned second uh, Timothy I believe it was chapter 3 uh, verses 1 through 5 in the last days men will be lovers of themselves boasters proud uh, you know, disobedient to parents and all that stuff. So I'll, I'll never forget, I'm reading that verse and I'm actually using, I'm at my Roman Catholic wife's house. I'm there at her, my in-law's house. 
They got this big old Roman Catholic Bible sitting there in the living room. They're all in the kitchen talking. I'm, I'm over here reading this Hal Lindsey book and using my mother-in-law's Roman Catholic. It even had the Apocrypha in it. <laughs> I'm looking up these verses he's quoting in this book. And I get to that Second Timothy passage. And uh, I'm, I'm looking at all those, the litany of evils that uh, are going to be uh, prevalent in the last days. And I'm sitting there going, boasters, you know, well, I'm a little like that, but I'm not, not that bad. And in other words, I'm dodging bullets <laughs> as I'm going down the line. And finally get to the last, I think it's verse 5 there. It says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Mm -hmm. And right at that moment, it's almost like I could hear the scales came off my eyes, and I could hear the angels singing that another one's coming to that. <laughs> I, it's like I got born again right right there when I didn't dodge that verse. I realized I was guilty. I was dodging all the other ones, but I got to that verse. I, oh, no. You know, that having a form of godliness but denying the power of. And I, I, I got to say, that was May 16th, 1981. And my whole life changed after that. I, this is in my testimony video I was mentioning before. But see, when you say that, it reminds me of when I got, and it was because I was in the Word of God. Word. Now, albeit I was looking at a Roman Catholic Bible, <laughs> but, I but was nevertheless, at the time, actually. Ne nevertheless, it was you know the Word of God right there, yeah. and the Lord blessed me by that, and that's why we try to preach on this television broadcast as much Scripture as we can because God uses that to bring His elect yeah. into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, so. That's why I really relate to what you're saying here. So you get saved reading the scripture at that time. Now what happens? Well, I just kept reading it and reading it. And um, it did totally change my life. Um, it, I wasn't going to bars and things like that ever at the time. But I just, my whole outlook on life changed. I was so happy and um, I guess full of the Holy Spirit. And I could not tell people enough about Jesus. Just like me. I was on fire. Same, same deal. Probably a little <laughs> obnoxious at times I was, but that's that's the way it was. And um, but I still kept going to the Catholic Church. Right, because you didn't know enough. Just like me, I I was attending the Roman Catholic Church every now and then with my wife, because she's Roman Catholic. And when I married her as a Lutheran, to me. I, Hey, what's the difference? What 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 difference does this make about what religion? You know, she's Roman Catholic, I'm Lutheran, no big deal, right? Of course, after that, everything starts to change because now all of a sudden I'm taking the Bible seriously. And, uh, of course, that ended up leading to some major trouble <laughs> with my in-laws oh, and, and my Same wife. Here. In yeah. fact, uh, in fact uh, to get out of, uh, we, my wife was attending St. Mary's Catholic Church at the time, one of the oldest Roman Catholic churches is in Austin, mm -hmm. and uh, she was. It was getting so bad at home that she was starting to uh, make me sleep in a different room unless I came back oh, wow. to the way I was. Because I turned into a different person. Right. The Bible and the Word of God will turn you into a different person. And uh, exactly. anyway, I had to, to get her out of that Roman Catholic Church and to prove it. She she actually set up a debate with her two priests she grew up with over there. So the priest actually allowed me to come to the Roman Catholic Church one night mm -hmm. and meet with the two priests she, she had for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I forgot their names now, but I sat in there for about, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes debating those guys, and it wasn't much of a debate. It was like, they're like scarecrows, and I'm just knocking all the hay at them. <laughs> and my, wife, my wife's just sitting there, because those guys didn't know the Bible. Right. at all they, they, they were completely ignorant of the Bible. And my wife sitting there watching this saw that mm -hmm. and then I was able to lead her out of the Roman Catholic Church and then she got baptized in that Greek wow. uh, a couple of years later so anyway that was kind of cool so go back to your story though I'm really relating to what you're saying <laughs> Good. so uh, reading scripture all the time but still staying in the Catholic Church uh, because I had gone to that church all my life I really didn't know anything else I, as, as years went by, I could see, you know, the difference in their teaching and what the Bible said, but still thinking, oh, I'll stay, I'll make a difference, I'll teach Sunday school, I'll teach a Bible study, 
which I did for a while. Um, but when I heard my pastor say that he does not believe that there's a, there was a flood, right. I, I don't know, that just struck a chord in me that I could not stay any longer in a church that didn't even believe the Word of God. That's right. That's because right. by my staying there, it was as if I approved of what they were exactly. teaching. Exactly. And so that was the night that I decided to leave and went to Day Spring. Mm. So um, I've never regretted my decision. One of my sisters-in-law, when she found out that we weren't going to the Catholic Church anymore, she said, oh, you've lost the faith. You've lost your faith. Mm -hmm. That's what she said to me. <laughs> I said, no, sweetheart, <laughs> I've not lost my faith. It's stronger than ever. I just cannot go to a church that doesn't teach truth. Mm -hmm. But all of my husband's family is very Catholic. Right. Just like, just like every, everyone on my wife's side of my family, they're all Roman Catholic. Mm -hmm. Every time there's a death, every time there's a funeral or a wedding, yeah. I know... I know it's what it's going to be. It's going to be a Roman Catholic wedding or a Roman Catholic funeral with the rosary and the whole bit. Mm -hmm. I know. I can hardly stand to go, but I will. I will go, but um, not unless I have to. <laughs> well, it was sort of like after I got born again and I went to that Roman Catholic St. Mary's with my wife, after I was born again that night, I went in there and I've been going there for a couple of years, you know, a, a year or so with my wife, or maybe two years because we were dating for a year before... I even got married with her, you know, right. and then afterwards. Uh, so when I walked in there as a born again Christian for the first time into that Roman Catholic church and sat there for the service, mm -hmm. I sitting there going, man, this place is like a cemetery. This place is dead as a doornail. I mean, I never noticed before because if you're a dead person yourself, you don't know you're in a cemetery. <laughs> So, but anyway, I just remember my own experience when I went to the church. I hadn't gone there for a couple of years, you know. know. And all of a sudden, wow, this is, this is, let me get out of here, you know. I know, Larry, so, I did not, like a friend of mine's son died, and I, I went to his funeral, and um, I don't know. I, I just, well, you know, nowadays, I've gone to one or two of Roman Catholic funerals, on my my wife's side over the last, I don't know, we've been married for 36 years. So I think I went to maybe two Roman Catholic funerals. And uh, one, one or, no, two Roman Catholic, it was her brother and her sister. I went to two Roman Catholic weddings also. But I mean, it's really immediate on my wife's side. Uh, but anyone else, I refuse to go to those things, you know, the rosaries or any of that stuff. Because when I did go to those those four Roman Catholic events, to two two funerals and the two uh, weddings, there was so much idolatry and stuff there. I'm I'm sitting there just praying to the Lord, and actually re rebuking the kind of stuff I'm hearing, mm -hmm. because what else can I do? Because I'm in a pagan temple, yeah. the way I look at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and so I I know what you're talking about. So. Go ahead. I, I do want to mention, though, um, the, the pastor previous to this one, um, I don't know if I should say his name, he was an elderly man, and he retired, and years a few years later, I heard him speak, I was still going to the Catholic Church at the time, heard him speak at a women's conference, and he was dynamic, mm -hmm. and I came to find out that he had been reading scripture, he mm -hmm. was reading the Bible. And there was such a difference in his preaching. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure he's still a Catholic priest, but mm -hmm. at least he's reading scripture. You mm -hmm. know, it just makes such a difference in mm -hmm. a person's life. Um, well, there, uh, you've ever heard of, have you ever heard of John MacArthur? Oh, yes, the, yes. He's a great preacher out of California. Mm -hmm. I don't exactly agree with all this uh, eschatology, but mm -hmm. most of the rest of the stuff he says, I'm 100% I'm in line with, but... Uh, Anyway, uh, he says a large portion of his church out there in California are former Roman Catholics, you know, so because he says, look, they start out at least believing in the Trinity. <laughs> it, yeah. It's some of the basics, yeah. you know, right. they're not saved, but then uh, they do acknowledge the Bible. And they've heard scripture. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then God can use that because mm -hmm. it was facing scripture as a sword of the spirit. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Hebrews 4.12, you know, the, the, the two-edged sword. Right. Of the so that's why we get the scripture out there. People can be saved. Yeah. Uh, 
So well, anyway, go ahead. I, I love that verse in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Yes. Uh, but you can probably quote it better than I, because my memory Not by is works. Horrible. Yeah. Uh, but by grace are you saved. Yeah. Through faith Lest any man Christ. should boast. Yes. <laughs> so we don't save ourselves. We don't save ourselves by obeying these man-made laws that the Roman Catholic yeah. Church puts out there. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is just, oh, it's such a comfort to know that God has chosen me, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that I didn't really choose Him. But I know He did save me through, you know, through going to those prayer groups. He opened my eyes because mm -hmm. of Scripture. Right. And, uh, and years later, I got... Um, I got colon cancer. I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, and I was reading scripture during this, you know, the, for my whole life after that, that first initial prayer group encounter. And because I had been reading scripture and believed these words, when I got that cancer, I chose not to do chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. I had always said I would never do chemo. You know, my but, wife did, I mean, my mother, sometimes your wife is a lot like your mother but anyway uh, my my mother I refute had, that yeah, <laughs> my uh, my my mother uh, uh, refused to get chemotherapy oh, good for her. but in her case she died she uh, as a result of it yeah. uh, now my my mother was into black magic and witchcraft and uh, mm -hmm. my dad I, I couldn't get to her she was dying in a hospital in Houston when my dad called me but I've been up for 20 hours I was doing a pro-life thing all day after working all night so I'd been up for 20 hours and then I get in the bed and like five minutes after I get in bed, my dad says, Hey, you better get over here tonight. I don't think your mother's going to make it through the night. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I said, well, dad, I've, I've been up for 20 hours. I'm dying here and get to Houston from here in Austin. It's, it's going to be like oh, a three right. hour drive and I can't hardly stay awake. Right. So I got to have at least a little sleep and I'll get there as soon as I can. Well, anyway, my mom died during the night like my my dad, but when I got there, he said, well, it's a good thing you weren't here because she died cursing God, uh, oh, cursing God. and swearing. But a lot of it was all that occultism and witchcraft she was in all those, oh, all those years, sorry. you know. Uh, so that, that's unfortunate. He said it's a good thing you didn't see that, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. But, mm -hmm. uh, but see, that's the difference. Yeah. See, my mom has cancer, and she doesn't opt for chemotherapy. She dies. You have, and you're telling me you didn't do chemotherapy, and yet you're still here talking to me right now. Twelve and a half years later. Um, what I did do, I did do some juicing, of course, but I just continued to read Scripture. And I marked in my Bible every place that talked about God healing us. Mm -hmm. And um, I just believed the Scriptures, as yes. I always had. And... I just feel like through his word, he really did heal me. Oh, God is the great healer. <laughs> he I mean, is the great healer. Uh, you know, I've got, I've got two handicapped kids. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they even advertise it in one of my newsletters. In fact, uh, before we finish here, which won't be too much longer here, but I'm going to show the, the people at home the newsletters that you actually help you yes. turn towards yes. uh, the word of God and in leading to the truth and stuff like that, which is church. exciting to me because I've always wondered what good are these newsletters doing, you know? <laughs> but we get the word out. Yeah, That's the key. Yeah. Uh, you know, I could go on and tell you a lot of different little stories that actually kind of relate in with your story. So it's cool for me because as you talk, it just brings up things in my mind where I just, wow, you know, and yeah. go, go, go like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I guess I want to wrap up the show because you said – our newsletters were very important in your life as yeah. far as the transition and all that kind of stuff. And so what I want to do for our viewing, viewers at home is I happen to bring every newsletter we ever produced. <laughs> and I'll just do a quick uh, review for our viewers at home. And by the way, these newsletters are free for anyone who wants to call. Actually, it's better not to call, to tell you the truth, because... Since I, I'm the one that has to answer the mail and all the phone things, and, and, and at this point in time while we're videotaping this, I still work two full-time jobs besides doing the ministry, and I also have two handicapped kids. In fact, uh, I have a son who was born in 1982 with cerebral palsy, Tommy, and I have a daughter, my youngest daughter, born in 1989, Gloria, who is autistic, and is severely mentally challenged, but not mm -hmm. as bad as my oldest son. Uh, so, 
in fact, we were, you were talking about healing a while ago. Mm-hmm. Well, it's interesting that in 1982, my, my oldest son, who has so, several palsy, he was in intensive care at the hospital for three months. His seizures were increasing to where they were only two minutes apart and they thought he was going to die. Mm-hmm. What we did was we brought in the elders of the church, including Jackson Boyette and the other elders came over and we anointed my son with oil. And uh, the next day, the very next day, he got the first proper medical treatment he had in three months because the doctors in San Antonio couldn't help him. The doctors here in Austin couldn't help him. And he was getting worse and worse. But we finally, that next day, we took him to the Austin Children, I mean, not the Austin, the Houston Children's Hospital. So we went to Houston, Texas. And he finally got the proper medical treatment and within a few months, he never had another seizure. Mm. He's never been on any drugs. He's, he's uh, 34 years old right now. He can't walk or talk. He's on a four month old level. Uh, and I still have been changing his diapers mm. for 34 years in a row, but he's still with us. He's a happy child. And, and I take care of him because I feel like he's a gift from God Absolutely. given to me and my wife along with my daughter who's autistic and mentally challenged. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're, the both of them are still with us and they're happy children. And Here's a photograph of my four children. Now this shot was taken back in the 1990s and my oldest is Marlena right there. And then my second son, Daniel, is standing next to her. But then I have my two special children given to me by the Lord, Gloria and Thomas. Now. I've been blessed with two special children from the Lord. My oldest son, Thomas, was born with severe brain damage. Thomas was in critical condition, suffering from an ever-increasing frequency of seizures as a newborn infant. The seizures started about one to two hours apart. However, they increased to within 10 to 20 minutes apart over the next couple of months. Doctors in Austin and San Antonio We're at a loss as to how to stabilize his condition. As Tommy's condition worsened, I called for my pastor, Jackson Boyette, pastor of Dayspring Chapel here in Austin, and the elders of the church, according to James chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. A few hours after Tommy was anointed and prayed over, he was taken to the Texas Children's Hospital in Houston, Texas, where the physicians, by God's grace, were able to stop the seizures. From that day on, Thomas has never had another seizure, although because of his brain damage, is on the mental level of a four-month-old child. Tommy cannot walk or talk. He travels by wheelchair, and I have been changing his diapers now, for his entire life, but my wife and I love him dearly. Our other special child is our daughter named Gloria. She was born autistic. She can walk and talk and particularly likes to sing. Matthew 19, 13 through 15. Anyway, both children are a great blessing to us and they're still with us to this day at the time of this recording. Uh, and is it's your exciting. daughter the one that sings so beautifully? Yes. Oh my! Oh wow! Well, that's my other daughter, Marlena. Okay. Oh, think, okay. In fact, a little surprise I'll have at the end is uh, I'm gonna. We were we were both were members of Bass Brain, and my daughter actually wrote a song. She yeah. you know she's done her own CD of songs she's written and performed, yeah. but she actually did a song on Bass Brain. Oh. And what broke her heart is she wrote that song for Jackson Boyette, oh. but as you know he was he was killed in that car accident by a drunk driver mm-hmm. in 2011. Right. And he never got to hear the song. Uh, but we put it on YouTube, and I'm gonna kinda end this show with Marlena oh, singing about our, our church yes. for the, the viewers out there. But what I'd like to do here to finish off our little time is you mentioned the importance of these newsletters. And uh, what I'm gonna do is go chronologically all the news that we did, which uh, as people see these, they'll know that you were reading some of these <laughs> because they were they were being mailed to your son. Yeah. He would get them in the mail. At my address. And you would intercept them. Yeah. <laughs> you would probably read them before he even saw I them. Did. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. Cool. You know, I've actually talked to several people who were on my mailing list, but their their spouses were unbelievers, 
And I, I talked to several of them who never saw my newsletters, even though they were on my mailing list, because they would come to their house. But the spouse would get hold of the newsletter before they got it. So say he didn't like Christianity, he didn't like, uh, you know, my TV show, I was cable access TV, you know, 400,000 households for years. And they didn't like me, they didn't like my shows, and they didn't want anyone, their spouses to see the newsletters. So they would intercept the newsletters and throw them away before their spouses ever got a chance to see them. Fortunately, that didn't happen in your case. No. No. Anyway, here's the first newsletter we ever did. Divinely Given Faith Really Works by Rob Zins from Dallas Theological Seminary. And he's a former Roman Catholic, and this one dealt with Roman Catholicism. And this may be one of the ones you actually read when it came to dealing with Roman Catholicism, mm -hmm. as you mentioned in your testimony. Yeah. Next one is, uh, is Mormonism a Cult, a lead article by Robert uh, McKay, who was a former Mormon himself, and then he got saved. Next one's an article, or a newsletter. I, I wrote the lead article on, on Jehovah's Witnesses Deceived Deceivers. This newsletter is very popular since a lot of people have to deal with Jehovah's Witnesses. And in fact, we've had two people on YouTube make comments that they were in Jehovah's Witnesses for 50 years. And they both came out of Jehovah's Witnesses because of our playlist on YouTube of like 20 videos dealing with Jehovah's Witnesses. And they came out of that religion. But anyway, here's the next one, an evaluation of Oneness Pentecostal, the uh, evaluation of the Oneness Pentecostal movement, or at least story by Mark. A. McNeil, who was a former oneness Pentecostal, came out of it, realized the error of it, and he was the Val Victorian of their main Bible college here in Texas. Uh, so, and he's done a lot of videos with us. And then Bob Ross, uh, Restoration Movement, Church of Christ, Campbellism, the Cult. Uh, for the speed, I'm not going to take too long on these, but just to show real quickly all these testimony of the eternal Godhead, the Trinity. By Dr. Edward Bickersteth author of the book, The Trinity. Uh, we've got Turn or Burn by the famous Prince of Preachers, Charles mm -hmm. Haddon Spurgeon. I read that. Uh, yeah, oh, you read the, the, the other one? Spurgeon, you can't go without Spurgeon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, real, we like Spurgeon around here. So, Okay, then uh, The Unlearned Men, the, the True Genealogy and Genesis of King James Version Onlyism by Doug Kudlek. We've done videos with him. Uh, here's another one I, I did. What's been going on with us lately is just to write up on our Christian Answers Ministry and how things are developing. Uh, spiritual Warfare with Dr. Thomas Ice. Written an excellent book on uh, spiritual warfare. I did a six hour video series with him for uh, cable access TV and uh, YouTube. Uh, Seventh Day Adventism, True or False, Wallace Slattery. Uh, he wrote the book that's put out by uh, uh, Presbyterian Reform Publishing are Seventh-day Adventists false prophets. We did a video series with him as well. A former Roman Catholic priest, Richard P. Bennett, uh, from Tradition to Truth, the priest's story. In fact, you know Richard Bennett. Yes, Member of Dayspring. Yes. I finally got to do a video with him. You know, here he's at our church for 10 years. Uh, and I said, come on, Richard, we need to do a video together. Yes, you know, yes, you, yes, same yes, church yes, all these years. Yes. Uh, so anyway, that, that's a great newsletter. Yes. Then uh, The Agony of Deceit with Dr. Michael Horton, editor of The Agony of Deceit book against the word faith charismatic preachers that you see on TV, the Benny Hens and the Kenneth Copelands and all the rest of those ripoff artists. And of course, I did a video series with him. He flew in from uh, up north. Here's one by my, my partner in the ministry, Dr. Steve Morrison. Okay, he has a PhD in chemical engineering. And anyway, he wrote the wrote this uh, newsletter on that popular movie at the time, The Da Vinci Code, mm -hmm. uh, with Tom Hanks and everything. The Da Vinci Code versus the facts in that book. That was such a bestseller. All lies, it's all fiction, but they try to make it look like it's true. Mm -hmm. uh, then here's uh, part one, actually, using the word of God in Muslim evangelism. Here's one of the, the great Christian apologists writing, uh, dealing with Islam. He's written a lot of books. He lives over there in South Africa. He's a friend of mine, uh, John Gilchrist. And uh, he, in fact, uh, debated uh, Ahmad Didat, one of the main is Islamic uh, apologists over there. It's so big among the Muslims. But anyway, he wrote this newsletter for it. That's part two. And uh, then we have another one here by Dr. Uh, actually, he's a pastor, G. Richard Fisher. Uh, he writes for the 
Personal Freedom Outreach Quarterly Journal, which I've been subscribing to since 1981. And he did this article just for me, uh, confronting the superstitious church of the 21st century. I shouldn't say just for me. He actually wrote it in a PF or PFO journal. I liked it so much. that Hey, can I use this in ours? And he said, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, next one, part one uh, by Dr. John Blanchard. Uh, and he wrote the book on Does God Believe in Atheists? Next one is uh, Does God Believe in Atheists, Part 2. Let's see. And then uh, here we have our, one of our missionaries. Now, you know David Sitton yeah. from To Every Tribe Ministries, mm -hmm. To Every Tribe with Jesus. And he talks about dealing with all those uh, people over in Papua New Guinea uh, and what it's, what, what it's like to do missionary work in the jungles and back there in those crocodile-ridden rivers where you come up on these grass huts and headhunters and cannibals. And yeah, he was almost killed by one of them. That's right, that's right. And he's written two books. But anyway, uh, he's a friend of mine. In fact, I remember once uh, talking to him in my living room over at my house when he's visiting me. He said, Larry, I respect you more than what I do going over there to these foreign countries out in the jungles, you know, with his machete. He's got videos of him cut through the next j jungle uh, village or whatever and he says you know you got rough over here these people are all hardened to the gospel but those people over there have never heard the gospel yeah. and it's exciting when you tell them the gospel they you know it's like living back in the first century when the apostle paul would go to a new territory oh, and uh, he says so he he said i got it rougher over here than he does out there in the jungle so i never forgot that getting that from a great I missionary mm -hmm. yep and here's one uh another one i did the lead article on uh, exciting new evangelism opportunities. In fact, there's our video man. He's actually videotaping this right now, the Dan there in that picture. Uh, but uh, here I just talk about some of our ministry updates, things we're doing. The origins of Muhammad's religion. There again is John Gilchrist. Moving along, we've got our psychic mediums communicating with ghosts or demonic spirits. That's Dr. J uh, Ron Rhodes. He's written many Christian apologetic books on many subjects. He used to work with Christian Research Institute with Walter Martin. Yeah, yeah. And Walter Martin was one of my big mentors. Oh, so uh, he really affected my life as being, a, being a, a Christian apologist. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, uh, here's Charles Haddon Spurgeon again. Like I said, we like, we like Spurgeon. This one's concerning death. Uh, here's another one. Now, we did some videos. I had an African American minister from Houston come over here, uh, Wilford Darden, Pastor Wilford Darden. And we did a series of shows on the Nation of Islam and Louis Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. And boy, we we got challenged on cable access TV, on YouTube. Uh, we want to debate you, we want to debate you. And, now, and of course, this newsletter here uh, is actually by Steve uh, Sakalis, uh, University of Birmingham, also Gordon Conwell, Harvard University. He wrote a book on, on the Nation of Islam, Understanding the Black Muslims, Louis Farrakhan, and, and Elijah Muhammad. Uh, but the videos we did with uh, Pastor Darden from Houston, uh, we were getting challenged by the Nation of Islam to do some debates. They said, hey, we got this TV studio, come on in. In the minute they saw that we were gonna That's do the debate, good. all of a sudden they all disappeared. It's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. They didn't want to debate. I don't know why. They were yeah. they were acting like, hey, they're all so tough. But anyway, and then we go, uh, this next one, here's another lead article I wrote on Mormonism I, and counterfeit Christianity. Here's an interesting one in the sense that I went to the, the Mormon temple opening in Dallas, Texas, and I give a complete write-up of what it was like to go to that Mormon temple and deal with the Mormon missionaries and everything else. It has a lot of, and then uh, the next one here, unpopular topic, how sovereign is God. Now, this is, this, this was my favorite one. Now, think. you just beat me to the punch because I'm saying this is my favorite newsletter oh my right here. And oh why is it my favorite God. newsletter? How sovereign is God? And because it's just I'm almost sure all scripture. scripture. Yes. It's the word of God. The very thing that God used yes. to save you and me and all the other people yes. out there that come to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's just so good it, to know that he's in control. Oh, no. And, and your scriptures are right there. Yes. You know, I have a lot of prison ministries that use our new, and I have that had more requests for this newsletter mm -hmm. from these prisoners in all these different prisons yes. who want to do Bible studies off this newsletter because it helps their souls yes. to know that God's in control yes. Yes. and they can trust Him. Yes. You know? and here's a uh, here's the last one I've done at the time of this video. In fact, uh, we've got a video out where we went to the Seventh Day 
Adventist General Conference in San Antonio last year. 70,000 Seventh-day Adventists were over there in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. But we actually produced this, this newsletter to hand out over there. Mm -hmm. And we did it. Yeah. We got out there and we handed this newsletter out. Seventh-day Adventism is not the truth. And uh, got some interesting reactions off of that. Few people know about our two Christian Answers journals that we produced back in the 1990s. The very first Christian Answers journal produced in 1994 began with a lead article by Rob Zins, The Big Compromise, When Evangelicals Compromised the Gospel for Unity. This particular journal also included an article by James White, director of Alpha and Omega Ministries, called Interpretation. It also covered uh, subjects like the International Church of Christ, alias the Boston Movement, an article by myself, Beware of False Prophets, and various other articles and information. Our other journal, which was twice as big as the first one, the first one was 24 pages long, the second one was 48 pages long and featured many articles and information. Once again, we have an article by Rob Zins, THM from Dallas Theological Seminary, When is Another Gospel Another Gospel? Surprised by Truth, Former Protestants Embrace Rome, an article written by James White of Alpha and Omega Ministries. The Roman Catholic Church in History, a book review off of Walter Martin's book on Roman Catholicism. Cultic Definitions, an article I wrote going into the various definitions of what a cult is. Lift Up Your Eyes to Your Idols, once again by Rob Zins. The Major Errors of Campbellism by Bob L. Ross one of the leading publishers of the works of Charles Haddon Spurgeon in the world. The Many Faces of Hinduism by our director of research, Dr. Steve Morrison. And you also have a glossary there of Hindu terms. And then also Hinduism deep in the heart of Texas, once again by myself, where I actually visited a Hindu site nearby here to Austin, Texas. Anyway, we no longer produce journals due to lack of time and resources, but uh, I did want to let the viewing audience know that these journals are there and you can get your hands on them if you so desire. Simply email our ministry and uh, we don't offer these free, of course, but if you would like to get a copy of one of these, just email us and we'll give you details as to how to get one. God bless. Now, one last thing I'd like to say as we get ready to sign off uh, is that you were talking about uh, Roman Catholicism, and I wanted to mention to everybody on television that we have a whole playlist on YouTube. And in fact, I think I was telling you about it before we started filming. You said you're currently in a dialogue with a Roman Catholic lady, mm -hmm. and you suspect she's copying and pasting <laughs> arguments and throwing them at you. Right. Well, I wanted people at home to know about our playlist on YouTube, and you see it there on your screen. It's called Dealing with Roman Catholicism, Idolatry, and the Virgin Mary. We've got at this time, uh, this recording, 144 videos on that, and we produced them all. We didn't get these videos from somewhere. We, these are videos that were home, homegrown here. And, uh, and I've also put in the comment section of all those videos on that playlist uh, uh, just a litany of good apologetic responses to arguments made by Roman Catholics, such as your encounter. So as, as I recommended before, just go there. Yeah, go and start looking in the comments section and see what will help you. And if she can copy and paste, you can do the same thing, right? Just copy and paste those uh, responses down there and send it back. <laughs> okay, with that, is there anything else you'd like to say as we get ready to sign off, my dear? Just to God be the glory. I really Amen. praise him for saving me, and um, I pray that this uh, video will be used to just bring much glory to him and perhaps salvation to many who watch it. Amen. That's the whole purpose. We just get it out, get the information out there. Yeah. I can't talk anybody into the kingdom of God. No. That's the job of the Holy Spirit. We just proclaim the word, try to live our lives that are an example as a testimony to the Lord Jesus Christ and leave the rest to God. Yes. And that really takes the heat off. It does. Because I'm does. not... I, I do what I can, and that's that's about how it goes, and you do the same thing, yeah. but we just trust God, because he's in control, he's sovereign, mm -hmm. and he'll, he'll see uh, that things will go the way 
He has ordained them to go. He will so, get his children. He exactly, will just like it says in Acts 13, 48. Those, uh, those who were ordained, exactly, yeah, <laughs> ordained to believe, those that are ordained by God believed. Uh, so that's the beauty of it. All right, well, thank you, Joan, for being oh, here with me as my guest. God bless you. Uh, and, of course, we'll have my daughter coming up, as you mentioned a minute ago. My other daughter. I've got two I didn't daughters. I did know you had two. Yeah, I've got four kids. I've got oh, two sons and two, two daughters. Okay. And, you know, I've got two special children, and I've got two normal children. So they're all they're special, all special <laughs> you know, by the grace of God. Yeah. Thank you. But uh, with that, uh, I'll see you at church. Absolutely. <laughs> God bless you. And thank you all out there for joining us. Uh, may uh, you always remember that Jesus is the only way of salvation. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. Amen.
check out our websites, BibleQuery.org. This site answers 7,700 Bible questions. HistoryCart.com. This site reveals early church history and doctrine proving Roman Catholicism is not historically or doctrinally viable. MuslimHope.com. This site is a classic refutation of Islam, a counterfeit religion created by Muhammad. Free newsletters are also available. Hello, this is Larry Wessels with just a quick message to our viewers to check out our main YouTube channel, C Answers TV, which stands for Christian Answers Television, where we have all of our over 610 videos posted. By going there, you can see all of our videos organized by playlist, categorized by subjects. Once you scroll down past our Bible prophecy trailer at the top of the channel page, the playlist begin. You'll see our recent uploads playlist, followed by our most popular videos playlist, followed by our playlist on Jehovah's Witnesses, then Islam, the Muslim religion, then Roman Catholicism, Darwin's metaphysical evolution religion, Seventh-day Adventism, dealing with anti-Trinitarians and early church history, our multiple playlists, which includes God-hating atheists, phony TV preachers and King James onlyists, dealing with UFOs, ghosts, spiritual warfare, our radio shows with national Christian authors and our music bids, the Black Muslims, Louis Farrakhan, and the Nation of Islam, Mormonism, Hell, Lake of Fire, Unpopular Bible Doctrines, Antichrist, Cults, New Age, and World Religions. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, Jonathan Edwards, and Spanish videos. End times, supernatural prophecies, and tough Bible questions. And our playlist dealing with predestination, Arminianism, and Calvinism. Our YouTube channel is built to help people learn the Bible and defend their Christian faith against false prophets that come against it from every side. Jude verses 3 and 4. At the time of this recording, our channel has already been blessed with over 6 million viewings and over 10,000 subscribers.